Hi guys, welcome to Gemma B Mix. Um, this is episode 14 of my crafty podcast, talking about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. Um, I have been knitting and I've been spinning and I've also been sewing this time. So I want to talk about my knitting to start with. Um, I have a finished object for you guys to see and it is what I'm wearing. So um, we've not got a very good angle so I'm going to take this off. This is the Boho Blush um, by Andrea Maori. I am so, so, so happy with this. Now make sure I'll show you the right way around. This is knit in the Wool Barns um, Cashmere Base. So it's um, an MCN and in their blush colourway. It's getting blown out, you can't see, oh no. Let me see if I can, oh, that's better. Look at this. Now this thing is huge. <laughs> Look at all this fringe. <laughs> Uh, and it just goes on and on and on and it's just massive it's huge I'm so 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 pleased with that um, it is the softest squishiest um, loveliest thing I've ever ever made um, I really really want some more of this wool this is yarn that I picked up at Yarndale um, in September and um, they will definitely be getting my custom again. I really, really love this yarn. <laughs> I don't think I can go on about it enough. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy with this. Although David said, oh no, where are you going guys? Okay, total switch because uh, the camera just fell on my face. <laughs> anyway, I'll carry on talking about my shawl so yeah absolute loveliness um david said to me the other day is like so why why did you do a big cowboy thing <laughs> it's not cowboys david it's luxurious <laughs> loveliness i'm gonna wear every day although the day that i finished it was the three day of lovely hot weather that we had in february seriously guys it's february we had 18 degree weather here i got all my washing finished. <laughs> I was so impressed with myself. Anyway, so th I finished, I finished the shawl on the on the hot weather, and I was like, I can't, I, can't, I couldn't even wear it. I really wanted to wear it, and I wore it out, and I was like, oh, sweltering, sweltering. <laughs> but today was the day that I managed to wear, uh, yeah, wear it out to the, on the school run, and it actually kept me so warm. It's so luscious. It's it's just huge and lovely and massive. I'm so so happy with it. So yay for me! <laughs> so when I was um, binding it off this project, I'll let me show you, I'm well, now that I've just put it all back on again, um, I learned a new uh, binding, um, a new casting off technique, um, which is like so stretchy. Um, and I actually think it's called the very stretchy bind off. So the bind off that was called for in the pattern I couldn't get my head around it. I couldn't work out how she'd done it. And I was trying to find like a little YouTube video or something, describe, you know, trying to find the stretchy, stretchy bind off. Um, and I found this one, which wasn't the one that was in the, um, in the pattern, but I, um, it will now forever be the bind off that I use. I was so, so happy with it. Um, and I think that was a video by Very Pink Knits. The camera's going again, isn't it? Slowly tilting. <laughs> One minute, guys. Sorry, guys. Um, the camera just keeps falling down. I think I've got it sorted now. So, yeah, I enjoyed this immensely. Um, I think by the end, it had something like 550 <laughs> stitches or something at the end. Um, and then yeah all the fringe and yeah it, it took a long time but I it was such a nice knit and I don't think I can go on about the wool anymore um it was it's lovely if you get a chance to get hold of the cashmere base uh, by the wool barn her range of colors are absolutely beautiful and uh, when my yarn ban is over that is what I will be buying okay <laughs> so there you go that is my finished boho blush um, 
I have another finished object, so um, it's just a small one. This um, is a little hat I made for James. So on my previous episode, I was talking about sewing James a hat and my um, mistakes that went along with that. <clears throat> I was only sewing him a hat because it was quicker for me. Normally, I can I can whip a hat up um, in half an hour, an hour. Um, and I thought, why am I making all these mistakes when I can just knit my boy a hat? So there's no particular pattern. Um, I got some um, James Seabret. Um, this is part time. I think, it, yes, part time. And um, it's a super chunky. And I just did a two by two rib and um, knit till, till, it, till it matched him. I think I need to put a pom pom on it. I think it needs a pom pom. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's my little hat for James, and I literally did this in a day. <laughs> so all that messing around, poor James not having a hat, he has a hat now. <laughs> Quick and simple. So those are my finished objects. Um, I have also been knitting my Zweig sweater. So, guys, I'm so happy with this. I'm making lots and lots of progress. I took this to knit night last night, so um, I, my knit night is on a Wednesday evening and I go to the Tetley Brewery in Leeds City Centre um, and we're usually there from 6 to 9. Um, however, on the, I think it's the last Wednesday of every month, they hold um, an evening where you can go do still life paint and drawing um, and they just put loads of little still lives all around on the different tables and there's a tutor that goes around and it's free you can just go along and do a little bit of drawing it's really nice so they'd moved the whole of the area around where we normally sit um, and they'd made all the lights really bright for the people doing the drawing um, <laughs> now we were we were a little bit cheesed off because we've asked for those lights um, a lot because you know we need to be able to see to knit um, but it's a bar and it's an evening and as the nights go darker the, the lights dim to for mood lighting or whatever um, but we'd ask the guys we said look you know these the, the art students have got all this light is there any chance that we can pop it's on a dimmer can we turn ours up a little bit uh, just so we can see a little bit more um, and he tried to turn it up for us and it must be on some sort of crazy timer um, and he, he just plunged the whole place into darkness um, yeah so we had the the lowest dimmest light then at knit night and he couldn't apologize enough but he couldn't change it back he was like it's on some sort of timer and I've managed to reset it to what it should be and the guy who changed it for the art students has gone and I have no ha idea how to get it back so knit night was a bit of a disaster last night really so um, I ended up coming home Anyway, sorry, that was a bit of a whoo, random tangent, wasn't it? My point was, I wanted, I had nearly finished my sleeve. Um, I wanted to try it on before I picked up the stitches, but I couldn't see to pick up the stitches for the other side. So, I have my Zweig by um, Caitlin Hunter. Um, and this is knit in um, a merino cashmere nylon by the Hair Sister Yarn Co. in the Pulse and Gilded colourways. And I finished all of the body down to my ribbon. I cast off a ribbon. I tried it on. It fits lovely. And then I picked up the stitches and I knit a full sleeve. So it calls for five inches of the ribbon at the end. And I just wanted to try on the, the sleeve first. Try the whole thing on and make sure... Um, so I've knit to what the pattern says, uh, but I wanted to try it on before I cast it off. So that's um, that's why I ended up coming home from knit night early last night, because I, I, I didn't want to try it on in the pub. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I've, I've, I've finished a sleeve. Guys, I can't believe it. I'm so impressed. So um, I don't know if I've shown you this already. Did I do this last time? Anyway, I'm going to tell you again. So when I picked up, I managed to um, do like quite a good pickup on that side. And then when I picked up on this side, there's a great big hole. I don't know if you can see that properly. Yeah, there's a great big hole there. 
Um, I'm really hoping I can pick it all up when I sew my ends. So let me find that little end and I'll tighten it up. So if I just pull that in, tighten it up a little bit, there's still quite a hole. So I think I'm just going to have to pick up a couple of stitches with the, you know, when I'm sewing in the end, and just tighten it up a little bit. Um, but I don't know how I managed to do it on one side and not the other. <laughs> anyway, I will get it with the other sleeve. So yeah, full sleeve, full body. I just need one more sleeve and I've got a jumper. <laughs> I'm so impressed with myself. Um, this is the first jumper that I'm going to be making for myself. Um, my first garment that I've made for myself. Um, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy with it. It's doing really, really well. Um, and hopefully by the next time I podcast, I might have a jumper. How cool would that be? I'd be like starting a podcast going, look at what I'm wearing. <laughs> yep, super happy with myself. Okay, that was my grandma ringing. <laughs> We're going out for some lunch today. Marks and Spencers again. <laughs> we go to the same place every time. Anyway, I'm going to carry on with my knitting. I, I said that was enough with my knitting, but I've been doing one more. So this is um, a long-standing um, sock whip that I've been doing. Um, and this is knit in uh, the Yarn Lab UK. And it is her first um, self-striping yarn. So it's the first lot of self-striping yarn that she did. So this one is called Beach Slider. It's a standard sock yarn. Can you see that properly? It's a bit blowing out anyway. Anyway. Um, so this was my first, so I didn't, I haven't put a heel in, so this was my first sock and, uh, this one is my second. So I literally just have to kitchen at the end. So sew up the end together and then put two heels in. So I think I was going to say, this is where I left off last time. It's not, it, this is just for right side, wrong side when I was doing the so, um, yeah, so I was really happy with this. I managed to get them to actually match, like the stripes. So I was quite impressed with that. So when I put the heel in, um, I'm going to, you cut into your, your work. So you pick up the stitches and cut, cut, the, cut the sock and unpick and then make a heel out of it. So that should be interesting. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. Um, and I did do a little practice. Um, oh, I should show you that really, shouldn't I? I don't know what I've done with it now. I did do a little practice. So I knit a little bit and then I, I practiced picking up stitches and cutting. And it was really, really quite simple. There was um, a YouTube video um, by Kirby Werby. Kirby Werby? I think so. And she explained it step by step brilliant absolutely brilliant video um so yes i'm going to pick up stitches and i'm going to self-stripe the heel um so yeah that's really really very nearly done so hopefully i might have two finished objects for you next week um, but that was a bit of a long-standing whip so because i've getting i finished quite a few objects um over the past couple of weeks um well the past month or so um so my whip count is getting really quite low I have um, my Zweig, I have these socks, and um, I have a long-standing pair of socks that I really don't like. <laughs> I can't pull them out. I've already had one, and um, the other one is halfway through. I will finish those socks. It'll be one of those things that I'm saying I don't like them, and as soon as I pick them up, I go, why don't I like them? I love knitting these socks. That's going to happen one day. Um, <laughs> So yes, sorry, sorry, I'm tangent again. So that's how many whips? So sweater, socks, and socks. I have one more shawl, um, the and I have a crocheted jacket that I was making for Edward. Um, that is more of a springtime jacket that I I need to pick up again, um, and finish because I started it last year and um, I really hope it still fits. <laughs> It's had a bit of a growth spurt. So that's five, five whips. And I have all these empty uh, project bags that I feel like I need to fill. So, <laughs> the plans. Okay, um, 
that is everything that I've been knitting. I have been spinning. So I want to show you my spinning. Sorry, I'm just like searching around randomly for where everything is. So on the wheel, last time I spoke to you guys, I was spinning the um, Secret Santa that I got from my lovely Julie. Um, and I finished it. And how lovely is this? I'm so, so, so impressed with myself that I managed to get this lovely looking yarn. Um, so if, as, as I turn it, you can kind of see there's one, one pop of red here. It's the only pop of red throughout the whole thing. Um, it was randomly blended in there. I absolutely love it. It's my little uh, rare stitch. And there is also like this pink streak that's running through. Now that was, I didn't realise, but it was what was already on the bobbin when I started spinning. So it was the leftovers that I'd spun for um, for my mum's hat that I made. So I spun, it. Was, it's um, a merino silk by John Arban. And it was just the leftovers that was on the bobbin and I'd used it as a leader yarn, um, not realised when I was plying that Obviously there was must must have been a lot more on one side than the other. Um, and as I was plying it, I was like, oh, this is turning a nice pink. I don't remember doing this. And it, yeah, so it was the, what was what was left. So I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna leave it in. <laughs> so I think if I knit anything with it, it's gonna have um, like a stripe of this pink at the beginning. Whatever it is that I do, it's gonna have this pinky bits right at the beginning. But yeah, I'm so impressed with uh, with this. Now I really want to to knit with my hand spun now. I have lots of it um, and I was talking to um, all the girls at the Spinning Guild about what, what it is they, they use their hand spun for. Now a lot of the ladies um, like to make things to sell when they go to, so because we're part of the guild they go to all the shows, they go to the big Massams show and, and Yarndale and um, Leeds wool festival, knitting and stitching shows and they do demonstrations and because they get to do a stall they like to knit things for fun and then they get to sell them on whereas I am very selfish, no one's having mine, it's mine <laughs> I want to knit things for me um, so I was having a, a random search through Ravelry and I was um, watching YouTube and blah 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 um, seeing what I can find to make hand spun out of um, and found spin cycle yarns. Now they're an American yarn um, and they own their own mill. So they bought their own mill, they dye their roving, spin it and make it into yarn and it it lends itself. It looks like hand spun. I mean, it, obviously it's beautifully done, like perfect. Um, so I've been looking through Ravelry at people's projects that they've made with spin cycle yarns and there is some beautiful things. So Andrea Maori has done um, a shawl and a cowl and a, and a top and a jumper, all the night shift. It's called the night shift, the night shift cowl, the night shift shawl, the night shift, I think it's called the shifty jumper. Um, and that's all with spin cycle and they look lovely. They're really, really nice. Um, and then people have been doing a lot of brioche with them, with, uh, so everything looks really, really nice. So what I'm gonna do is make some more. I'm gonna hand spin some more. So I don't know if I've ever showed this before. Is it this one? Is it that one? Excuse me, sorry. I'm gonna get really close up now. Oh, geez. <laughs> so lovely. So um, I, don't, I don't think I ever showed this before, but this was um, some fibre that I picked up from Yarndale and it is, um, from John Arban and I I spun it to dye it. Um, it's proper blowing out there, I can't really. Um, but this is kind of the same um, weight. I th it's not quite a DK. I don't think it's a fingering. I'm not quite sure. Um, so I've got two here that I can make. I have this one, but it's very uneven. I don't. I might just shove it in anyway. So I've got two that I want to dye. I've got this one and at the guild meeting, 
we had Coastal Colours um, come and do a dyeing demonstration for us. Um, and we all got to pick whether we wanted to dye some fibre or whether we wanted to dye some yarn. And um, he literally had every colour going. And then obviously a big stall of all his yarn that he'd already dyed, all the fibre that he'd already dyed. Um, and on his yarn, he shows what colour he's used. So he uses the gear wool dyes um, and each skein of yarn had the colours of the dye that he'd used. So I scoured all these dyes, all these yarns that looked beautiful and lush uh, and picked my favourite my favorite skein of yarn and then picked those three colours to dye some fibre. So it turned out, oh let's have a look, we're blowing out a little bit, let me get it out. Um, it turned out very moody, which is what I've been talking. So this fibre, we also got to pick whichever fibre that we wanted um, and because it was part of the guild day, the guild paid. I love that. <laughs> so I got it for free. <laughs> um, so I, so this is 100 grams. It's baby alpaca. I don't know if you can see. I'll, I'll just tell you. It's baby alpaca, mulberry silk and cashmere. But it was already in a very dark, oh, let's see. This is the piece of the undyed. You can't it don't really lend itself does it you can't really see it properly um, but it's a grey colour so it was a dark fibre that I picked because I thought it might but look at those so this was a raspberry and then I picked a silver birch which is like um in the yarn it looked a lot bluer um, and because of the dark fibre it's gone uh, this dark grey which I really love and honeycomb so raspberry honeycomb and silver birch and yeah 100 grams of this absolute loveliness it just so it's so nice it feels absolutely beautiful and i think this will go lovely with this what color can i dye these and then i've got four nice skeins and like i don't know how much are in each to make something big and lush and lovely. Plans, plans, plans. So um, I've got a little bit more spinning to do before I can put them all together. But yeah, that's so I was really, really happy with this. And the guys that was doing it on the um, on the day, Coastal Colours, um, <laughs> I think they were a little bit shocked at how much the guild has grown. Um, I didn't apparently they did the same last year so they came and did um, a, a dyeing demonstration last year and everybody got to choose a skein of yarn and everybody dyed yarn um this time he said that we could dye fiber i don't think he realized well i didn't know but the guild has literally doubled in size over the past year and dyeing fiber is a little bit of a longer it takes longer to dye fibre than it does to dye yarn. Uh, and we're a spinner's guild. Everybody picked uh, everybody picked fibre. I think two people picked yarn. Um, and it was there were a lot of people there that day. Um, so we got into groups of twos and just went out uh, two at a time to do it. Um, my partner, Jasmine, picked the most amazing rainbow colours. And hers was like a white fibre. It looked brilliant. Do you know, I had a little bit of envy then. I was like, oh... I went all moody and dark and she went all bright and amazing. I was like, mm, maybe we should share. I'll have half of yours, you have half of mine. But no, we didn't. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was a lovely day. I had a really, really good time. Um, so yeah, I'll leave out. So that's the spinning that I've been doing. I've also been doing a little bit of spinning on my um, drop spindle. Um, so... I go to the Spinners of Air uh, meeting at Armley Mills on a Wednesday. So they meet from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock every Wednesday. Um, they have a wheel that I can use there um, that's usually spare. There's a, there are a few other people that come that use it as well, but it's usually spare. Now, James has got to the point where I can take him to a playgroup or something on a morning, make him stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, <laughs> and then I'll drive to Armley and he'll nap during so I can get a little bit of spinning done. Um, now 
because we're a group within the the museum, the Amley Mills Industrial Museum, um, they usually have school trips. So the schools are there and we do demonstrations for the school trip as well. Now, the time that I get to the group is about 11 o'clock. Um, James will sleep for an hour to two hours. Um, however, when the biggest group of children come into the room, which, which is where they eat their dinner, we sit and spin in, um, in the cafe area. Um, so all these kids come in and they wake him up every goddamn time. <laughs> every time so I started not using the wheel because the, by the time I can get and get sat up set up and um and sat down and finally get a rhythm and then it's dinner time or James wakes up or, or we stop and eat we usually stop and eat at 12 as well um so I've been using my drip spindle when I go up because I can literally pick it up and put it down and I feel that I'm actually getting something done and I've been a little bit productive at the same time I just go there and talk anyway <laughs> just go for the chat um they're a lovely lovely group of girls I think they're all amazing anyway <laughs> I'll stop yammering and show you what I've been doing so um this is a drop spindle that I picked up from Spin City um she does uses them in resin and puts pretty flowers and glitter and all sorts in it. Um, this fibre is some of the test fibre that we did when we went to dye the different fibres with Julie um, in the summer. Um, so I don't know how much is here, it's just uh, a little bit of something that we had left over and I'm going to spin this up and put it in with everything else. Um, I'm really really happy. I don't know what fibre it is but it's coming, it's turning out really really nice. Um, I think I used a blue and I wanted to put little speckles of red in and the speckles didn't really turn into speckles, they just blended um, and I wasn't happy when it was in the fibre form but it is spinning complete it's just different it's turned it darker you can't really see it's turned darker and is blending really really nice so I'm really really happy with that so that's more spinning that I've been doing so that's that's what I've got left um, to finish and then once that's finished I think I'll chain ply it on the wheel um, and that way I don't have to do another one another drop spindle I'll apply it with something else. I'm going to apply it with itself, um, doing a chain ply on the wheel. So there we go. And that is all the spinning that I've been doing. So the other crafts that I've been doing this week is making bags. So I shared on my episode last time, if you didn't see, I'm going to be doing a, a little stall well, we're going to take, <laughs> we're going to be joining the Spinners of Air um, at Leeds Wool Festival. We, the Spinners of Air get a table um, to sell their wares, sell what they've been spinning or making or whatever, um, alongside doing the demonstrations at Leeds Wool Festival. So me and Julie are going to do a little collaboration. She is beautifully dyeing some um, some yarn. She naturally dyes um, everything she does. I think she's currently uh, getting daffodil heads. Um, I saw on her Instagram the other day. Um, and because of the crazy beautiful weather that we've been having in February, she can actually get daffodil heads in February. How cool is that? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, Julie uh, naturally dyes yarn and I'm going to make some bags. So I've been spending my time trying to make, uh, come up with a little bag design. And so I'll show you a couple of bags that I've made in the past. So this is what I've got my socks in at the minute. I uh, fully lined them with just... And I think this is a perfect size for socks. And then this is one that I made, um, this is what I've got my spinning in at the minute, but it's what I've had my sweater in, my Zweig. Um, the Zweig has now got too big to fit in here, but it's done, it's done good till, till, the, till now. Um, 
So again, so that's a little zipper pocket that I've made. Um, and then I did a drawstring bag. Um, this is massive. Um, this, is, uh, this is way too big. I think it's too tall. I made this quite a while ago. And then so this is what I made the other day. So um, it's just with leftovers. So this is um, actually what my uh, living room cushions are. <laughs> um, so it's a little drawstring bag um, that stands up stands up nicely this has got my swag in it it fits just nice um, my brother made some little I don't know if you can see them there uh, little wooden tags for me I was really really pleased with that thanks Johnny <laughs> um, and I really like this style so what I need now is to do a proper little design um, of different sizes so I think this is the perfect size um, it can fit well it's got my full jumper in there and a full skein of yarn and my purse and it's usually got my phone in it as well because <laughs> this is now my handbag i have taken it everywhere since i've made it i really really like it um i think i'm gonna pop a pocket inside so what i need from you guys you need to tell me in the comments below what type of project bag is your favorite okay so I made these little zip ones and I swore by the zips before but now that I've made a drawstring I like the drawstring so I also tried did I bring oh yes I did so I also tried to have you seen the bags with like the clear plastic in um so this is some one with a little bit of scrap so it's not finished but I tried to make a bag with the clear so you can see what kind of knitting is what so you know you can see what's in your project bag however the lining <clears throat> trying to line the bag has really blagged my head <laughs> I, I can't get my head around how i need to do it um so i've got all the pieces i've got all the pieces of the bag and again i'm just making bags out of scraps that i've got a leftover yeah a leftover fabric um just to try and find the, the best kind of pattern and I've literally been cutting up pieces of paper and this size, this size, this size um, I'm going to go crazy on my um, on my sewing machine trying to find what um, what's the best I do like the idea of having um, a clear panel in but I do want it to look nice on the inside as well so I could do it perfectly without it being lined but then you'd see this on the inside I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't think it's professional in the look. I don't, I wouldn't, I, I'd feel a bit disappointed if I bought something like that and then it just on the inside you could see everything. I don't know, would you? I don't know. It's just on the inside. Would you be bothered? Do people like the fact that you can see what's inside? I don't know. Tell me guys, tell me what's your favourite project bag? Do you even use a project bag? Do you just throw it in your handbag like I used to? <laughs> I need to know these things, okay? Um, research, <laughs> product development, and all that kind of thing. So that is that is me, guys. That is everything that I have been making over the past couple of weeks. So if you can uh, leave me a comment, tell me about your favourite project bags, uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you've enjoyed and um, I'll see you next time, okay? I'll see you later guys, bye!